The five interface that I'm going to talk about is LM Studio, Misty, Jan.ai, Anything LLM, and Klee. At the end, you're going to see which one I recommend and which one I'm keeping uninstalling everything else except that one. Hey there, my name is Angel, and in this channel, we talk about things like AI tech, business, and personal growth. In today's episode, we're going to talk about DeepSeek. Now, a ton of videos have been made on DeepSeek already, so we're not going to dive deeply into the details of why DeepSeek is so awesome. You've probably already heard about it. What we're going to talk about though are options to access DeepSeek either through the web or downloading it onto your computer locally so you have less privacy risk. I'm going to test out five different options of UI interfaces that you can use to access the distilled model locally and you can decide which one you like best. Ideally, I want something that has RAG already incorporated into the interface so you can chat with your local documents and not be afraid of people spying on you and wondering why are you asking those questions. Before you get started, can you do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button or the like button if you haven't already because it's going to really motivate me to keep creating videos just like the one you're about to watch. Thanks. This is the agenda for today. We're going to do a DeepSeek intro using DeepSeek, how to access it, and then we're going to talk about the five UI interfaces. I'm going to showcase those and you can decide which one you like best. So what's DeepSeek? Basically, it's an open source, budget-friendly ChatGPT alternative, right? In the flagship model, is DeepSeek R1. It's cool because they released a paper talking about how they trained their model and you can read all about it from this link that I have. It's open source and the distilled models are freely available for use. So why is there such a big hype about it? Well, it's so much cheaper than OpenAI. There's a new way that they use to train the model, which is why it's so cheap. And their models are outperforming a lot of the models that you see out in the market, especially around reasoning tasks like math and logic and coding. So now, how do you access DeepSeek, right? The best way is to go to chat.deepseek. I already have an account, but you just need to sign up for an account and you can start chatting. And what I really love about DeepSeek is that they showcase the AI's thinking. So you can read why it's coming up with this answer that it's giving you. It's always fun to understand the logic and what the AI is thinking about. This DeepSeek version is the version that they use millions of dollars to train still, even though it's much cheaper, it still costs millions, right? It is not going to be the model that you download onto your computer. The models that you download onto your computer will be the distilled versions that's trained using some of the other smaller open source model. DeepSeek.com is one way. The other way you can also use it on the mobile apps. You can also get access to the API by going to the platform.deepseek.com. But right now, due to server resource constraints, they are not allowing people to put money into the API. But unless you're already topped up, you can't really use it right now. Then there's also third party sites, for example, Perplexity. You can select over here, Reasoning with R1. This will also give you the R1 access as well as Grok. You can also access over here and you can select DeepSeek. But notice again, it's a distilled version. Lastly, you could also access DeepSeek locally. I've already downloaded it. And basically what you need to do is download Olama. What you have to do is go to Olama and hit the download button. And then you're gonna hit models, DeepSeek R1, and you're gonna select the model that you wanna run. And you just have to go into your terminal and over here and put that Olama run DeepSeek. Now it's going to pull it. Once you finish downloading the model, you can start typing a message. I'm going to ask the same message. It's going to show you what it's thinking and give you the response. And this is all ran locally. So you have access to it on your terminal, but actually using it on the terminal, it's not ideal. And also you don't have access to RAG. What we're going to do today is combining Olama with the open web UI. You can follow these instructions over here to download open web UI. Copy this command over here. Go to your terminal, open up Docker and paste this command. You have to allow it. Once it's done, you're gonna copy this, depending on how powerful your laptop is. After you're done installing, you just have to go to localhost 3000 and you create an account. Now you're gonna see what's new in open web UI. You have a chat interface that has all these new things in it. You can also add upload files, capture. You can see which models you have installed. I'm gonna add get the same question and now it's going to use this distilled version and generate 
me an answer. It's definitely slower than the web version. I believe it's because I'm using Docker, so it's a little bit slower. But over here, you can also upload files or capture, which are things that you don't easily get access to if you just use the terminal. But you could also see here, it will have your history. So with the open web UI, you have a few more features than if you access it locally. Because it's so slow though, it's not my favorite option. So next, we're going to look at using LM Studio, which is a very popular option that a lot of people talk about. I'm just going to download it, move it to application. Now I'm going to open LM Studio. You should be able to see this. You can download your first local LLM, start with the state of the art. While it's downloading, let's look at the features that it has. You can run LLMs locally. You can chat with your local document, which is a key feature that I want. Use model through in-app chat UI or OpenAI compatible server. These are all the features. Over here, you can see the model catalogs. All of these models are available for you to use. Now that this model has been downloaded, we're going to start new chat. You need to select a model, which I downloaded. And you can also adjust the context length too. You have a ton of features listed here. Load model. And then I'm going to do send. It's faster than earlier. And some responses. File attachment and rag. You can now chat with your own documents. You can upload up to five files at a time with a maximum combined size of 30 MB. You can also use a developer mode over here inside LM Studio. Over here, you can go through models directory text embedding. It will show you what you downloaded, change the appearance. You have other settings like advanced configuration, system prompts, sampling, structured output. You can provide a JSON schema. So it has a lot of features and it's definitely way better than using terminals. It also shows you how many tokens were used. Overall, I think this is a pretty nice interface for people to use DeepSeek. It's so easy, you just download it and a much better option than going through the Alama route. You have a lot of options that you can tweak on. If you wanna change to a different model, you go to this settings button and go to model search and you can decide which other model you wanna download. If you have this green button, it means you're good to go. So this is LM Studios. Let's move on to the next option. The next option is called Misty, I believe, and it is an option that I found on Reddit, so use it with a grain of salt, but the UI interface look really cool, so we're going to check it out. It says pricing over here, and it's free forever, but you could pay for an annual version if you wanted additional features like advanced response analytics like this. We are just going to check out the free version today because I don't think you need to pay. Go over here and download it based on your operating system. This is what I have. So I'm downloading it through here. It says personal usage is on the house. Professional business use requires a paid license. Let's go and check it out. Drag it into application, open it. And this is what it looks like. We're going to set up local AI and it's now downloading DeepSeek R1. Over here, you can edit some DeepSeek instructions. I love the UI interface. It's pleasant to use. You can see over here, you can add providers, just input the API key. So that's good. They support APIs. You have a whole bunch of customization options. You have all these features, local AI, service health, service endpoint, and you can do split chats as well. This is crazy because I've been paying for a service that allows you to run different models. Over here, you can download different local AI models, browse and download models online. This is a very powerful tool. Knowledge stacks. Remember what I said about wanting a tool that does RAG, right? And this is RAG right here. This tool allows you to add your files, folders, Obsidian vaults, notes, and YouTube transcripts, chat with them, and RAG. You need an embedding model to compose a knowledge stack. You could use local AI model, downloading the embed. After you click that, you can add your first knowledge stack. So you can add all the files that you want, all the YouTube links, and this is super cool. I can't wait to try it out. It even has a prompts library. This is very featureful, guys. This might be a better pick than what a lot of people 
will recommend, which is LM Studio. This is more feature rich than LM Studio. There's like prompts that you could search for. And over here, you can manage local AI models to download and try out different models. You can add a default prompt, unlock more features. You can buy a lifetime access. It looks really good though. Whoever is behind it, it's got some taste, some good taste. Using real-time data from the internet. So you can also use this to search the web. We're going to try this. Command click search provider DuckDuckGo. Okay, so I turned on the search function, the real-time data function. It did go through some website, but I think this is actually not legit. I think it probably is the model. And maybe if I use APIs, maybe it's better. Let's just say I take this question onto DeepSeek, the website, enable search. I bet it will be much more accurate. And this is much more accurate. Live in daytime compartments. That's literally a quote from the book. So I think it depends on the model too that you use. The real-time data function is meh so far, but it would be interesting to upload a knowledge back. I'm gonna see if it could take a large PDF file. Hit compose, composing. Okay, now I got this message that says knowledge stack is ready, composed and ready to chat. Over here, what we could do is attach knowledge stack and set herbs that drain damp. I just got a random PDF about Chinese medicine and now I'm asking questions that were from the document. It's a PDF. The answer doesn't seem to make that much sense. Over here it had citations and where in my PDF does it mention that page 298 and this is what page 298 is showing so this is super cool. I like that it had citations. I definitely see a lot of use out of this Misty and I'm really liking what I'm seeing. Overall, I think Misty is a really good try. Okay, the next one that we're going to try is called Jan AI. So we're going to download it in Mac. You can see here with Jan AI, you could use AP like Open Router, Anthropic, Open AI or whatnot. You can paste Tugging Face URL. You can also download one of these other ones. They don't seem to have the latest one over here. Let's just download one of the models and play with it. You can add an API. Let's look at their UI UX. Let's see what kind of features they have. Compact with solid, translucent, night blue, dark, keyboard shortcuts, privacy, experimental mode, enable new features, enable quick ask, advanced settings, extensions. You could do the model settings, prompt template, engine settings, GPUs used. You can do some tweaking. Let's look at the tools. Embedding model, vector database. It's pretty fast and you can upload documents. It's allowing me to upload a PDF, but it's a little bit slow. This one is okay. You could probably import model and import DeepSeek, but wow, this app is very fast. And I can see if you just want a super clean offline model, this might be it. It, it has a lot of tweaks that you can do for local models, but it doesn't look like it can search the web. You can turn on retrieval and it has some basic rag system. When Once you upload a PDF that's shorter, it does work well and it's giving me the context from what I uploaded. Honestly, this is running really fast and it has some interesting tweaks that you can do to it, but it's rudimentary because you have to upload a PDF one at a time and the experience seems okay. So that's jan.ai. If privacy is your main concern, this would be a decent tool if you're not planning on using web search features and you just want basic rag using a model from hugging face and chatting with it maybe uploading a document or two this could serve your purpose this might not be my favorite pick so let's move on to the next one the next one we're going to check out is called anything llm okay this is anything llm choose llm preference i'm going to select Olama because i already have it installed embedded privately vector database perfect i'm liking what I'm seeing right now is create an account. It's interesting. I like the UI already because they're thoughtful about this. You can attach a file, attach images, or you could do rag search, web scraping, web browsing, save to file, browser, list documents, summarize documents, chat generation. This is super cool. This goes to the documentation. This is support. This is their discord, open settings, appearance. You can change the theme to light. 
Oh, it's really bright. And lots of display languages. Show chat window scroll bar, customize messages, AI providers. You could do vector database, LLM, embedders, text splitter, voice and speech, transcription, general settings, workspace setting, agent skills, web search, SQL connector. I'm going to turn on live web search, generate charts, custom skills. In order to use the features, which they have plenty of, you will need to add agent. So I just turned on all those features. You can add agent, agent chat. Let's see what it comes out with today. Anything LLM seems very powerful, but for some reason it's really slow. Maybe it's because of the model that I'm using. I'm going to try Claude and see if it works. I'm running into some problems using this one. It seems a little bit buggy. Even if I'm not using the agent feature, it's really slow and doesn't seem to be doing much at all. Got to restart. While the agent feature seems really cool. I am running into so much problem. Tagging agent seems to take forever to load. This agent thing is taking forever so I don't think this anything LLM is really working for me at the moment. We'll see if it's because of a bug or some other issue but that's my experience with it right now. Let's move on to the next one because I can't keep waiting. We're going to look at the last one which I also saw on Reddit and it's a new one but one thing about this that's not ideal is that this does not support web search. It looks a little bit like Slack. Continue, local notes. This is the last one called Klee. Build your second brain and we'll see if we like it. I don't think I set up a model yet. There's local private self-hosted knowledge base. This is the rag that I was looking forward to. Link existing folder for embedding. I'm going to go over here, settings, and take a look at this. Local models. This one says success. Give me intro to calculus. It's working now. Add to note. Okay, so that's cool. It has this note taking feature that allows you to quickly add to notes. I'm going to go over here. You can add source. The source would be knowledge base. You don't have enough context. It's more like a knowledge database, like your second brain, right? Instead of a interface for your local AI models, I would say this is more like a note taking service with some AI functions, right? And they allow you to download models so you don't have to use an API. Of all of these, now that I looked at a few of them and CLI, it's like a new development, right? So there's still room for improvement. But as a note-taking app, it's cool. I have seen other apps that do similar things and I already have a lot of note-taking apps, so I'm probably not going to use this one. Of all the ones that I tested today, I'm going to rate them. And by the way, this is my Quip doc that has all the notes. I'm going to give a rating out of these. I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10 because it's good. It does its job, the LM Studio. But Misty impressed me, so I'm going to give it 9 out of 10. And Jan.ai, 6 out of 10. This was the first one that I was like, okay, I'm going to uninstall this. And Libre Chat is, if you are technical, then I think this might be better for you. But because this video, I want it to cure toward people who are not like super technical. I want something that people could just install and use DeepSeek. This is more advanced. So I'm going to give this maybe like a 6 out of 10. And then Klee, I think I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10 as well. I think the Klee is still very rudimentary. And anything LLM, this was the only one that I think it's very promising, but maybe it's buggy for some reason today. So I'm not able to get as much use out of it. So I'm going to do 6 out of 10. This is roughly my rating. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to uninstall everything else and only keep this one app, which is missed. From a usability standpoint, I love the UI UX of Misty. And for a UI interface, that's probably what I'm looking at. It has split windows, local rag, and a bonus that they have prompts library, and you could search the web, do quick prompts, attach images, documents, their sticky prompt. So if you have to download one, I would recommend Misty. And again, all my notes will be in the YouTube link. And if you can, if you want to do me a huge favor, hit subscribe so you can stay in touch for more videos. Leave a comment below and let me know which UI interface you use to access your local AI models. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.